this video, we're going to be talking about how to study the period of a pendulum and also how to use that period of a pendulum to find the relationship between period and mass, angle, length of string, and then also how to find the little g value, which is the acceleration due to gravity. So if you have a pendulum set up, what you're going to do is to measure the period. It's the amount of time it takes to move back and forth. So you would release it from a certain point and then let it come back to that same point. Now, that is capital T, which is your period in seconds. Okay, now when you do that, um, chances are, unless you have a really, really long pendulum, the time is going to be fairly short. It's going to be something around one or two seconds. So with that being said, um, our human reaction time could be around 0.2 seconds for the start or the stop. So most likely, if unless you have like some special sensors that can read the times for you, your timing is going to be decently off because of that human error. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to find several periods and then do a little bit of math to get the most accurate period possible. So what I would do is something like this. I would make sure the string is taut pull it back to a certain amount, let it go, and let it swing back and forth, and then count it up 10 times total. So that if you get something like 15.5 seconds, you can divide it by that 10 swings, and then your single period is gonna be 1.55 seconds um, on average for those 10 swings. And if you wanna be really accurate, you can do this um, a bunch of different times and average those numbers. So if you want to run an experiment to find the relationship between period and mass, angle of release, and length, you would go ahead and take a look at all three of those. Um, angle of release. Mass. And length of the string. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is make sure you control two out of those three variables and make sure they stay completely constant and only vary one of them. And as you do that and measure several periods, you're gonna notice a few things that are a little strange. The points will probably kind of fluctuate moving slightly up or down, but there is actually no relationship between the angle of release and the period. And there is also no relationship between the mass hanging at the end, end of the pendulum and the period. Now, the only thing that does have a relationship is the length. The length does have a direct relationship. As that length gets larger, that period will definitely get larger as well. Now, with angle of release, if you pull it back farther, it will allow the pendulum to develop more velocity, but it is swinging a greater distance. So in the end, that actually doesn't change the time it takes to go back and forth. And then with the mass, you have a component of gravity that pulls more on the mass that's hanging on the pendulum, but you have a greater mass with a greater inertia. Turns out that also has no effect on the amount of time it takes to go back and forth. So the only one we really need to pay attention to a little bit more is the length. So um, to study those, as I said, you would make sure you keep two of them constant and then just vary one of them multiple times, we'll say between seven to 10 times, and then you would be able to graph those and then see the relationship. Now, what we're going to do next is solve for the little g value. So what you would do for the little g value is you would use this formula, which is the period equals two pi times the square root of the length of the string over g. And then the little g is the thing that would be looking for. So you can find the acceleration due to gravity at any specific point on Earth, or I suppose another planet as well, um, with the pendulum. So one, you want to want to find the length. Now for the length, what you want to do is actually measure it from its pivot point to the center of mass of the object. Okay, so that's not a very good job, but we'll say that's like right in the center over there. So you would maybe like um, measure your sphere, um, see what the diameter is and divide it by two. Um, but either way, you would want to go from the pivot point to the center of mass if you want to be very accurate. Okay, now let's say for example, that length is, we'll just say 56 centimeters. 
and you would let that go. You would let it swing back and forth 10 times. Remember that angle at which it's swinging back and forth isn't um, significant. So even though it might um, lose a little bit of energy and then kind of swing back and forth and that angle would get smaller and smaller, that wouldn't actually change the period. So you don't have to be concerned about that. So um, as we go, let's say, for example, that we get a period of 1.50. You let it go to 10 swings, you divided that total time by 10, and then maybe you got a bunch of these times and you averaged them. So maybe you got seven of them, added all seven of those up, divided them up, and then now you have a super accurate period. So now we have 1.50 equals 2 pi times the square root of 56 centimeters, which we would convert to... 0 0.56 meters and then actually plug everything in so it would look something like this 1.5 seconds equals 2 pi times the square root of 0 0.56 over little g and then we can go ahead and solve for little g so what we can do is divide both sides by 2 pi and then we could square both sides to get rid of that square root. And then that would give us um, about 0 0.057 equals 0 0.56. Oh, excuse me. 0 0.56 um, divided by little g. And then all you would do is cross multiply those two. And then your little g in this case would come out to 9.82 meters per second squared, which would be a really, really good value if you were able to produce something like that. Um, but anyways, this red formula over here is going to be your key to calculating the acceleration due to gravity. And you want to make sure that you run the experiment as accurately as possible by getting um, maybe something like 10 swings and then doing this multiple times and getting another um, average to get the most accurate period possible. When you plug in that length, the length is always from the pivot point to the center of mass. Remember, not just the actual string itself. And then after you do that, you can do a little bit of algebra as we did over here. And then you would get your little g value that might look something like this over here. If you're lucky, if not, hopefully it'll be around nine or 10. So I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and listening.